I want to thank you for honoring Bill's memory by being here today. It means a lot to our family. I was privileged to be his wife for almost 50 years. And he wasn't perfect, although I might get some argument there. And I want to tell you that about three months ago, he told me, I know you'd like to keep me around longer, but I'm ready to go to sleep and wake up in heaven. And that's what happened Saturday morning. I believe he wants me to tell you how he knew that he would wake up in heaven and how he has that assurance. And it wasn't because of anything he had done, but because of what Jesus had done for him. Several years ago, about 1972, he got down on his knees one night and confessed his sin. He said nobody had to convince him that he was a sinner and asked Jesus to come into his life. It went something like this. Jesus, if you're real, I want you to come into my life and show me. He didn't even tell me about this until about six months later. But he told several of us later that he went from that night, not knowing for sure there was a God, to, to knowing that God personally through his son, Jesus Christ. Bill's life that night was changed forever. He would say, especially in the last 17 months, it's the best deal in the universe. We get to trade these old, worn-out bodies in for new bodies because of what Jesus did for us. What did he mean by that? That Jesus took our sin and exchanged it for his righteousness. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Can you imagine getting to heaven and having people boast about how they got there? Well, we know how much we like boasting now, listening to that here on earth. So obviously it's God's grace through faith, not anything that we have done. Bill understood it was totally God's grace when he asked Jesus to come in and take control of his life. He never wavered, even over the last 17 months. He kept saying, we're going to keep trusting the Lord. As for me and my house, we will trust the Lord, and we're going to keep trusting. He changed that one word in the verse, but it sticks in my mind. And even in the hospital, I asked him, are we still trusting? Yeah. Yes, we are. <clears throat> he really never said, why me? But he said, God is in this. And I think maybe the reason may be that God wanted to show many of his family and friends, what his faith really meant to him as he walked through this valley and to show all of us that this life is not all there is and that we need to get ready for eternity. I just would ask you if you have the assurance that you'll go to heaven when you die. You know, you really can know. The Bible says, these things that I've written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you can know that you have eternal life. He doesn't need us to hope for, wish for, but if we have Christ, we have that certainty. He's left a great legacy of faith and trust, even through the darkest days, all because of what he did in 1972 and when he committed his life to Christ. If you're not sure that you'd wake up in heaven when you die, or you're not sure if you've ever really given your life to Christ, you can make sure and you can have that assurance. You never know, none of us really know how much time the Lord's given us. To quote my husband shortly after his diagnosis, the only thing I feel like I've given up is the illusion of control because I never had control in the first place. You can pray as Bill did. Jesus, if you're real, come into my life, forgive my sin and show me. And he will. He can give you the assurance that you'll go to heaven when you die, not based on anything you've done or could do, but because of what Jesus has done for you. Pray as Bill did. Jesus, if you're real, come into my life and show me. Give me the assurance of heaven when I die, not because of anything that I've done, but because of what you've done for me. Your grace through faith.
faith in your son and his death in my place. Okay. Hand me that that book that was other book that's there. Yeah. This one? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it was great. I just wanted to get through that. And now I really would love to tell you some things that I wrote down that I love about my husband. I wrote these in September. Uh, and they obviously are probably even more true today. I love his smile. I love his sense of humor. I love his playfulness. I love his inquiring mind. I love the way he listens and cares. I love the way he draws me out. I love how he played with our kids and grandkids. I love how he was a spiritual leader in our home and our church. I love his character. I love his generosity. I love his wisdom. I love being next to him. I love golfing with just the two of us. I really love how his faith hasn't wavered. And I love how his relationships have always been more important than money. I love the way he mentors and disciples without even knowing it. I love the, there is no pretense in him. I love his true humility. I really love how he loves me and cares for me. I love his, how his faith has not wavered. Most of all, I love his love for the Lord and the way the Lord has changed his life 